next song I'm going to play for you is called... What do you mean it's not that kind of festival? Healthy You Festival. Let me hear you scream. Well done, yeah. I think I heard that. That was, that was good. Okay, my name is Robert Taylor and I'm an exercise referral instructor for the Cambridge City Council. I prescribe activity to people, participants who have been referred from health professionals to a 12 week exercise program that lets them help manage their medical condition, disability or injury recovery. So if you live in Cambridge City and that sounds like something that may benefit you, then I would definitely recommend clicking the following link. Together, we're going to do a home exercise, low impact body weight fitness class. I know you're ready. So let's get those joints and muscles ready for exercise and do the warm up. Make sure you've got some water nearby to hand. You can rest at any time. These exercise durations are windows of opportunity and it's all about you and your capabilities. Your first move is going to be marching on the spot, rolling your arms in a circle motion forward. And you can start that in three, two, one. Here we go. So you're marching about hip width or just outside hip width apart. It's almost as if you've got springs in your ankles or hydraulics in your ankles. You want to control these arm circles, so make sure you're not flapping around. It may be that your arms are a little bit quicker than your feet or vice versa, but just make sure that everything's in control. If you struggle with this coordination, you can just do a march or you can just mobilize the shoulders. Now let's bring it back the other way. Be careful of the shoulder blades pinching. You're going to be engaging the upper back here with the backwards arm movement. We're moving at the ankles, the knees, the hips, the shoulders, warming all those joints up. We're getting our breathing rate up. We're getting the blood circulating around the body and warming the muscles up. We're almost there. Two, one. I'll demonstrate the next move. It's Stepping to the side, arms up. Stepping to the side, arms up. Okay, so this is going to be your next move in three, two, one, and come join me. So now we're moving in a different plane of motion. You'll notice that I'm not stepping my feet fully together, and that keeps a nice stable base of support. I'm bringing my arms up so they're adjacent to the floor below working those shoulder muscles, those shoulder muscles once more. It may be that you take a bit of a bigger step if you want to make this move harder, as long as you don't overstretch. By stepping to the side, we're working the hips, the bottom muscles, inside and outside of the thigh. And of course, we're still getting that breathing rate up and we're still pumping that blood around the body. If this is a little bit too fast on screen, you can go slower. It is just the warm up, remember? Yes, breathing rate's going up. Yes, heart rate's going up, but we don't want it to be overtaxing. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate the next move, side on. So it's flicking those heels up towards your bottom. And if I turn it round, you don't have to do it side on. I was just showing you from different angles. We've got a mimed, bicep curl. That's now. Here we go. So with this one, heel coming towards the bottom means you're engaging the back of your thigh, the hamstring muscles there. Notice that my arms are purposeful. They're not just loose. Okay, so I'm squeezing and engaging the front of my arm already in just a few minutes, moving the body in many different ways. It may be that you just do the legs, that's absolutely fine. And remember, you versus you, one of my favorite sayings in exercise, it's about how you feel, controlling that body weight, soft knees. You wanna be strong but light, if that makes sense. So moving strong but light, so you're not thudding your feet on the floor 
and annoying the people in the room below if you happen to be in an upstairs room. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the next move. I'll show you side on. Bottom out as if you're sitting on a high stool. I'm going to pretend to grab a ball at one knee, turn and shoot it out past the other knee. So front on, make sure your knees are out over your ankles. We're not turning too much. So this is the first time we've brought rotation of the body, of the trunk, of the torso. Let's get it more precise. There we go. Push those arms out as if it's a chest press or a chest pass in basketball. You don't have to come too low. You can just turn. So you can come a little bit low if you want it to be a bit higher. Your knees should not be, by the way, let's go to the other side. Good. Your knees should not be protruding past your toes. They shouldn't be bowing inwards. So do be aware of that. And if I show you side on, your back shouldn't be curved up. Okay, both feet remain on the floor and you can come up and down depending on how hard it is for you. One more move coming up for you. I'll demonstrate, have a little rest. Forward, forward, back, back. Forward, forward, back, back. So now we're merging out of the warm up. Nice and light. I weigh over 12 stone. I'm in a very creaky flat, but the main thing you can probably hear is my ankle clicking and it's done it since I was a little boy. But it's all good, it doesn't hurt. It's completely fine. Moving the arms as well. The more space you cover on the floor, you don't want to overstretch. And then the pace you inject into the move, the harder it's gonna be. You can purposefully step this move. That's absolutely as fine, absolutely fine as well. The more I can't talk properly in complete sentences, well, that's just like normal really, but I was gonna say that that shows that my breathing rate is up and I'm working hard. Nice, light, springy, purposeful ankles. Five, four, three, two, one. Pummel the feet a bit, have a rest. I'll see you for section one. 15 seconds to show you the first move in section one. Let's have fun. So it's out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. There's the buzzer. Your minute starts. So you do want to come wider than hip width apart. Nice and light on the ankles, nice and soft on the knees, purposeful. Remember if this is too much, out, out, in, in. A step is fine. Working the hips, the bottom, inside and outside of the thigh. Getting that breathing rate up, heart rate up. So if the breath is up, we know this is gonna be good for helping towards weight loss. It's only a quick step, we're not jumping loads, so it's within the low impact range. Fantastic, very good. You can stop at any time, you don't have to go for the whole minute, I want you to do as much as you can, but also I need you to work to your own capabilities. Keep it smart, smart training is the way I like to go. Brilliant stuff, so 15 seconds to show you the next move. I'm gonna show you diagonally on. Guard up, standing in front, and it's one, two, one, two. Very small twist in the body. It might be that you're up on the back toes. Notice my shoulders are relaxed. I'm not hunched up. Notice that I'm punching with purpose, so my arms aren't floppy. Key thing, so many people punch with the chicken wings out. Get the elbows in, one, two, one, two, one, two. If that's too much, slow it down. If that's not enough, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's amazing how much you can get your breathing rate up just from punches. If you wanna make it even harder, don't go too heavy, but you could hold some hand weights if you've got some handy, or maybe some tins of beans. Just make sure you're not doing it in front of the TV and you let go and they smash through your TV. It could be any tin food, by the way. 
Whatever you want, new potatoes, that's pretty hardcore there, bigger tins, need big hands for those. Keep going, good, one, two, one, two. Keep that tummy nice and tight. You don't wanna overdo it, but you don't wanna to be too upright, remember? Well done, minute up, 15 seconds to show you the next move. It's a high knee march. We're not gonna go into a run, but depending on how easy or hard you want this to be, it's mainly to do with speed. I'll show you side on, there or thereabouts, I don't really want you going higher than your hip height. Almost think like your stomach actually is bringing your knees up and that should stop you from being too upright. Make sure you're not too curved over at the spine as well. Dragging those arms back, so it's almost like you're pinching at the shoulder blades. And look how purposeful I am in my movement but I'm not making that much sound in the rickety, rickety, very, very nice flat that I live in. Good. Remember, you can go slower. You can even not bring your knee as high. If anyone was unsure about balance, then remember, you can use something secure on the floor for balance, as long as you've got that knee clearance there. Fantastic. Next move, I'm going to show you side on. We have got either squats, feet just outside hip width apart, toes facing diagonally out, the hips come back, knees out towards, toes but not going over. If this is too much, you don't have to go as low. If I show you front on, the knees aren't bowing in. You could also do this with a secure chair. Come forward, nose over knees, and up, another way of thinking about it. Fingers, pinkies into the hips, forward, lose the pinkies, and up we come. You could sit right down on the chair, the final third of the chair, or you could just use the chair as a guide and tap your bottom on there. Many different alternatives. Remember, you don't have to go as low. I like to say that there's a big red button, don't ask me why it's red, and as you bring your knees forward, you stick your bum out on the big red bum button. Good, although your nose is coming forward, your chest isn't, so you don't want your chest to cave in. It's all about the hips. Good, working all the leg muscles here and getting that breath up as well. I've got one more move for you in section one. Marching and palm over palm, over palm, over palm. In front of the face, it's gonna get your heart rate and breathing rate up. Keep those arms in front of the face, unless it's too hard. You don't have to move around like me. I'm showing you from different angles. This would be a bit easier. If you want it to be a bit harder, then flick those heels out in front of you. Yes, I'm leaving the ground. Yes, there's a little bit of impact, but it's not high impact, but it is hard. Okay, you can mix between the progressed and regressed moves. Look at me from side on again. I'm not leaning back. And why is that? Because my stomach is engaged. It's not a stretch. If my stomach stretches, I'm in this position. So be aware of that. You don't have to hold that position violently. Doing well. Nearly came too far forward there, out of the frame. Your chest muscles are responsible for bringing your arms in. Make sure you don't come from too wide. So you're gonna feel tension in the chest muscle there. That's section one, you aced it, well done. Section two, final section before the cool down. Feet just outside, hip width apart. We're bringing our arms diagonally to one side. This knee is bent and watch that balance. We're driving the knee to the palms. You don't have to touch, it's just a guide. Here we go. If you want a little bit of an easier version, take one arm and it's elbow to knee. You can still drive up with purpose. If you've got a higher ceiling, unlike me, you can bring your arm high, otherwise it goes dong, dong, okay? Make sure you keep that balancing foot, leg, knee, ankle soft, slightly bent. Notice how I'm coming outside of hip width apart. If my legs are too close, there's nowhere to move and it looks a little bit awkward. I'm slightly turned out, 
but I'm not fully turned out to the side. That's a completely different move, but it will still get your heart rate up. Well done. I like to call a lot of my exercise classes, imagine it as exercise class the musical. So if you're thinking nice, big, cheesy smile, moving with purpose, it will be more energetic. Okay, 15 seconds, have a little breather, and it gives me a chance to show you nothing revolutionary to the other side, of course. So if this is 12, we're cut on a clock, we're coming back to 10, arms to the side. It may be on that first one. It may be on that first one that you don't bring your knee as high. You don't want to lose balance on your first one. So if you imagine it was your first one, it may be that you just step across, get used to that stepping motion, then, okay, I've got the balance. So don't rush into these moves. That's the quickest way to do them wrong. Learn the move, then build the move up. A reminder of the regressed version, just don't put your fist through the ceiling. And notice how I'm still coming wide. If I'm too narrow, there's nowhere to move. There's nowhere to go. You don't have to touch your knee with your palm. If that means that you're curving over, there's a back problem. It's just guiding the move. Look at this, I'm not even touching, but I'm still moving a lot and it's still very purposeful. Well done, take a rest. You can hear that buzzer, can't you? So the next one, what we're gonna do, showing you side on. You can just stand and do this. Palm, 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 palm. Or knees forward, nose over knees, bottom back, over towards that bum button I was talking about earlier. Let me show you from the front. Keeping those arms nice and tight. I am not locking out completely at the elbow. If you start feeling tension in the lower back, you shouldn't. So it may be that your back's not used to that position and you just have to come up a little bit. I've still got a little bend in the hips and the knees. My legs are still engaged. It may be if you're really advanced, if you're doing this and you've done this for quite, uh, exercise for quite a long time, it may be that you're able to hold a lower position. Look at the extension of my arms. I'm not locking out, but I am going almost to full extension. If you do this, it's gonna be easy and you're not fulfilling that full range of motion. But if this is too much, that causes any issues, then half range is fine. Brilliant, well done. It's moving very quick and have more rest if you need. So, miming skipping, like a skipping rope, and then it's touching your toes on the floor in front of you. Yes, it's impact, but it's low impact because we're not really leaving the floor that much. If that's too hard, purposeful, exercise the musical steps. You don't have to do the cheesy smile. Imagine it's the opening number. Keep those arms controlled. They shouldn't, <laughs> that looks funny, they shouldn't go wild. Don't do that. It may be that you slow the pace down. Imagine that skipping rope. You will know if you're out of control because you will sound like a dinosaur, a T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Light but strong, like a gymnast. I'm not saying we have to be at gymnast level because I certainly am not, but just thinking that or remember, a tap, whichever suits you. It's all about you, nobody else. Fantastic, so the next one, these are called skaters, okay? So where we're gonna go, take it slow. You might wanna drag your toe across the floor. You don't have to cross outrageously. Okay, if you haven't done these before, start. It's just a slight cross step. Notice how it's not an outrageous cross step. Just foot past one or the other. That's it, one and the other. Now, if you're getting a little bit more used to this move, that's when you can start bringing the pace up. It may be that you do this exercise class more than once, I certainly hope so. Notice I've got enough space. I've cleared the space before 
off the camera is a load of bags. So make sure you're not doing this anywhere near. That chair's probably too near, in fairness, but it's got nowhere else it can go. I'm in control. Doing good, remember, it can just be a step. Don't cross that leg too much, because then we may twist at the lower back. Okay, brilliant stuff. 15 more seconds, we're getting close to the end here. Very similar to the toe touch skip. We're gonna get a little bit more of a stretch in the back of the leg. So we've got our fake skipping rope and it's heel, heel, heel. If I show you side on, you will hear a little bit more of a donk because the heel's a little bit more solid than the toe. But it's not a massive donking sound, is it? Notice how I'm just ever so slightly forward at the hips and I kind of dip down into this. We can also tap the heels out in front of us. You could also get your tins back out or your little hand, rates, hand weights if you wanted to. Just a light tap in front of you. If hands and legs are too complicated, the main thing is when I tap out, there's a little hinge in the hip and look at this knee when I tap out, the other knee ever so slightly bends. Big finish before the cool down. Well done. Let's cool down, you deserve it. Cool down time now. So, using a wall or maybe the back of the chair on a good surface. Back toe up, nice healthy lunge. Knee forward, hips forward as well. I'm not leaning back, I'm just thrusting my hips forward and you should feel a stretch in the top part of your thigh. We've done a lot of lifting the knees, so this area needs to be stretched. There's the buzzer, change sides. If you're sitting down, that stretch is too hard, you can bring a leg back sitting on half of the chair and you can stretch your hip flexor out, top of the thigh, just by lightly thrusting into the motion in the same way. Keep breathing through the stretch. You should only come to mild tension in the muscle. Fantastic. The next one we'll do is hamstring. So the standing hamstring stretch. Notice this leg, the knee is slightly bent. Heel out, hips come back, back's nice and flat. Keep looking forward. It's more about getting the hips back than touching the toe and you should feel a stretch in the back of the leg there. If that's too much, just put the toe down and you'll get the same stretch. Fantastic. On the seat, toe down, looking forward, front third of the seat. And feeling that stretch to mild tension. You shouldn't feel like the muscle's gonna pull in the back of the thigh. Notice I've got a little bend if I wanted it to be a little bit in the knee, if I wanted it to be a little bit more intense. I'd straighten that leg, but don't completely lock the knee out with absurd pressure. We don't want to put too much pressure in those joints. Good. Calf muscles now. Using our back of our chair or the wall for balance. Nice big, big stride. This time the heel is into the floor. My chest comes forward as well as my knee. Unlike the first stretch where my body was up. And I'm pushing my heel into the floor below, not violently, but with purpose, stretching out the calf muscle. We've been very springy at the ankles, so we need to stretch out those calves. Same again the other side, unless you're doing a chair version, which is similar to the hamstring stretch, but the toe comes up. So the tension, rather than being up in the back of the thigh, comes down to just below the knee in the calf muscle here as well. You're looking forward, don't look down because I'm not any more flexible, I'm just moving unnecessarily at my upper body, at my torso there. You can slightly bend the knee if necessary. Upper back stretch, I'll show you side on, slight bend in the knees, not locking out the arms. I can lace the fingers or if that's too much, I can just bring the hands to either side and I'm just pressing out making a C shape 
in my back. You can do this sitting down as well, of course, as well as, I can't even speak, as well, of course. Chest opener, so hands like steps tragedy, and then you can open the elbows. Just make sure that you're not thrusting forward with your body, so keep that stomach nice and engaged. If you're on a chair, it might be that you simply reach to the back of your chair. Just make sure you don't over pinch those shoulder blades. It's about the shoulders coming wide and opening up that chest. Final shoulder stretches. Arm out across body. That may be enough. If it's not, just don't force your arm, but lightly guide it across with your other hand. And if you want to stretch your neck, look the other way. You can do this sitting down, of course. If this is too much, what you can also do is bend the arm and bring the elbow across. So let's show you on the other side. So I'd bring my elbow in front rather than my palm. I would guide that across. Make sure the shoulder doesn't come up and attack your face. And then look the other way. It may be easier just to reach across. Keep breathing through the stretch. Mild tension, tension around the side of the shoulder there. And that is your session. Well done. I had a good time. I hope you did too. Exercise session at home. Use that video more than once. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Enjoy the rest of the Healthy You Festival. Come on.